Happy Christmas, welcome to day number 15. Um, so in number 15, we have, I put it away before, uh, that one. No, that's 16, that one. In box number 15, we found before we had, I can't believe we got this in the calendar. Really, really amazing. We've only got a jadeite carving in the calendar. It's lovely, lovely. Which one's three? <laughs> they haven't got numbers on these. <laughs> so it's absolutely beautiful little carving. It's a, it's a little rose. Um, and, you, and then you've got a couple of rounds below it. Absolutely sweet. Um, but it's already finished. It's, it's a pendant. Um, it's got its bail. So I thought about what I was going to do. So I thought I'd do a bit of chain mail with you today. So we're going to do a bit of chain mail. So on the, on the bust over here, do you want me to fetch it over? Okay. There we go. So there he is sitting on, sitting on the chain. So this is Helm's weave, or it's also called parallel weave. It's a really lovely weave. It's a great weave if you're starting, but it's one of my favorite weaves anyway, so you can use it anytime. And then I've just added the, the, um, the pendant onto that weave, and, and I think it looks great. And I, you know, I've used um, copper there, um, and, it, and it fits in great with the silver, so, so don't worry, use, use your mixed metals um, to do it. If you want to, you can put it on a cord and, and you're done. But I just loved, I loved the, um, the addition of it to the Helms weave. I think it looks really good. So I'm going to try and put that box down, you know, when everything's in reverse. It's like driving the boat, this. Right, there we go. So, so that's our main project. We're going to be working on the Helms weave. It's, it's a great weave if you've never done any, gym, uh, any chain mail before. It's a really nice starter's weave. Um, if, we, if we're done in time, which I think we probably will be, um, we're going to do this bracelet or a version of this bracelet. We've got different gemstones. And, um, so this, the bracelet is based on, um, on a Japanese weave. Um, but it's, 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 again, it's a great project to do. Um, lovely, lovely, nice uh, thing to do between Christmas and New Year. Nothing majorly complicated. So we've got two projects to work on, but we're going to start with the Helms weave. Um, so you're going to need a couple of pairs of pliers. Now, it's personal choice which you use. So I tend to use um, flat nose pliers. You can use bent nose pliers. They're very, um, very popular with um, people who do chain mail a lot um, because when you're opening them and I've got my supersized, well, I've made some more because I forgot them, supersized jump rings, you can either go fine with the tip and hold something in a narrow space, which sometimes when you're doing chain mail, you do get into narrow spaces or you can see the, the difference with the coverage just by turning the plier around. So you've got, you've got um, a difference with the one plier of, of doing the two things. Okay, so you've got the, those pliers, so we'll use those. You've got your chain nose pliers, which are your graduated ones, um, which again, quite finer on the, on the tip. Or you can use your flat nose pliers, um, which when you're on bigger jump rings, that's great. If you go down to some of the smaller, finer jump rings, you're smothering the jump ring. But I, I love my flat nose pliers. I'm going to use my fingers to begin with, and then I'll progress to those. Only because I'm going to show you how to do it with the supersized, um, with the supersized jump rings, and then we'll do it in reality with some realistic jump rings. So jump rings, Helm's weave, you can do with most jump rings okay um, some some weaves you can't do because of what they call the aspect ratio which is basically the number of jump rings you can get inside one jump ring um, that's basically what the aspect ratio is so it, it's it's how much how much bulking together you can do so to do you know you can put so many in and then it's it's too full you won't get any more in um, so, but Helm's weave is really forgiving. Um, so we've got a couple of different sizes there. 
Um, that's a seven mil inner diameter with a five mil inner diameter. That's a nine mil inner diameter again with a five mil. So you can, and this is this is quite a fine jump ring. They're about the same gauge. Um, you can do it with a heavier one. The one I've used there, I'm just going to pinch it for a minute. So you can see here they're a thicker gauge. So these will be a one mil and they are a seven mil in a diameter as against the nine mil um, and the five mil. But you can use you can use a finer gauge if you want. Um, absolutely no problem. So this and, and also you can use um, closed jump rings when you're doing this as well. Not for all of them. Obviously, you've got to open some jump rings. Your smaller jump rings can be closed or you can have the bigger jump rings one or the other so you have two sizes one of them can be closed and one of them has to be open it doesn't matter which way around it just changes how you make it um so i'm going to pop those out of the way and we're going to get going so i've got my two different sizes of jump rings so there are like i say there are a couple of ways to start this you you basically want to have your i'm going to build it for you so you have your two jump rings there and you put one in the middle and then you have two jump rings this side with one so this is the basic construction and then you have your smaller jump rings in there holding these four together so your small jump ring has got to be able to cope with four of the bigger jump rings uh, and that's that's the only issue you have with your aspect ratio you can use two in the middle you can use three in the middle um so this one has two in the center two of the smaller ones this one has three depending on how much room you've got depending on how much movement you want to give <clears throat> can can change that so if you've got jump rings at home then you've almost certainly got the size of jump rings you need to do helms weave um, if not um, we've got some um, oh we've got some sterling silver ones fantastic we've got different ones going on the website um, pop them in uh, Tom's Tom's busy loading everything up like mad so so have a look at what's on there if you haven't got any to do it or if you fancy doing a sterling silver one how amazing would that look and then that would match your sterling silver of your carving and it would look amazing okay so how do we build it so generally i'm going to have two of my bigger ones and two of my bigger ones and we're going to attach the small ones to it like i say there's two ways to do this so i'll take you through both so we're going to add two of those these obviously will be very loose because they're not normal size jump rings okay so let's pull those out so that's your basic okay so we'd have a chain We'd have another two there and we're going to add those two on so you're doing um a two by two basically two jump rings in two jump rings in two jump rings so you 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 are ending up don't flip them it will build up very quickly chloe um so once you've got a little bit started like I say, there are a couple of different ways. These, I am opening the smaller ones. If you've got a smaller, um, if, you're, if your jump rings are only three mil, for instance, then I would suggest opening the big ones to thread them on. So you can make that in either, either way. Once you've got there, we need the jump ring that's in the middle. So if I fetch that back conveniently in three different colors, the silvers are our double ones every time. So these, these are the silver there. Then this one I'm gonna put through is where we've got the copper and then the gold we've got three gold ones in the middle doesn't matter whether you have three four two it's how many will fit okay so we're going to feed these so this wants to go under there i will try and do it while it's flat and then around there so let me shut that properly Okay, so it goes between the twos and around there. So that's now sort of holding that and giving you your parallel. So if I hold that up, 
can you see can you see how that's forming so if i turn that sideways you can see your two one two and then that's in there so because these are so large that will slip down um so then we need to put one in the next one so if i try and do it up here so you're going to go between those two big ones around the copper ones in the middle and through the next two so if you wanted you could build your tra your tra chain to the length you want doing the two by two and then fill in the middle afterwards again the smaller the jump rings are you're using the more awkward that's going to be to do because you're trying to sort of manipulate and it's quite fiddly when you get smaller ones but you can see that's built up in no time at all you could keep going with that and it would build up and um, obviously these are these are um big sized so the other way of doing it is as you go along so we've got to there so we're going to add our two jump rings on there and our next two big ones okay if you get that by the way it's just that your jump rings have flipped over there you go and then we, before we add any more we're going to slide that through there which is connected but this one is loose so we can actually just duck it round quite easily so it doesn't have to be connected and then we can just add the next one on so there's different ways of doing it the other way you can do it is you're adding these in and catching those I find that a bit more fiddly so I'd try one of those two methods first um, and see how you get on so I'm going to try I'm going to do it with now with some proper size jump rings <laughs> so you'll get the idea of how it how it fits better because that's obviously all a bit what I will say before I go on is this you can actually turn into circles so you can create and you can create um sort of bezel settings so if you if you if you if you turn that into a circle with another jump ring there if you lift these up you can put them either side of a gemstone and then you can connect all those up and that's that's a different way of using helm's weave so there's loads and loads of different things you can do with this um so i'm going to take those out of the way so we've now got some smaller jump rings and i think i'm going to go smaller than those let me just grab another i've got so many jump rings here <laughs> let's have let's get those out so this might be too small yes i think it is let's stick with what we've got so we've got um a seven mil in a diameter these might be a little bit big but we'll see so you want to have some of these closed and some of these you're going to open but we can open them as we go along and it's fine these you're now using i i, I have a bad habit of using my nail to open them you can get um i don't know whether we've still got them on the website or whether we sold out um you can get it's a bit like having a thimble on and it's got a, a, a it's a, a jump ring opener and it's got a few slots and basically you'd pick it up twist twist um i think it's the jump ring um opener i think we looked last time didn't we tom um the t we have we have got the toolkits though haven't we cool this toolkit's fab so you so you've got those three pliers plus you get your cutters plus you get your round nose pliers and and amazingly you also get some um nylon pliers so that's really fabulous that's a fantastic kit to have so i'm using these so we okay come on so we're going to start off with our we want our two of these oh toolkits on your screen and we're going to close it i'm just going to double check so the important thing is here that they fit in there now these don't so i will use my smaller ones because i picked the wrong 
bag up. This is what happens when you do live. I've got my mini travelling bag of jump rings here and I've pulled the wrong ones out. They'll do. I know, Tom, you can't get the staff, can you? It's, it's a shame, you know. <laughs> Those are the same size. I thought they were the... Oh, I know where they are. I know where they are. It's all right. It's all right. I know where they are. They're in here. Got them. I put them there so that I have access to them straight away. And then I couldn't find them. It's an age thing, Chloe. It's an age thing. There we go. So you can see these are a little bit, not massively smaller, but just enough. So now this jump ring, if I take one of these closed ones, this jump ring will fit in the middle of that without any trouble. And that's what you need. So that's, that's the main thing about these is they'll fit inside one of the jump rings. It can be a tight fit. It doesn't matter, but they need to, you need to be able to get them to fit. So let's start that again, shall we? So we're going to pick up two of our jump rings. There we go. Uh, we actually need four, four of the big ones going through there. So once you've picked up your two, this is what I say you can, you can use whichever. Gosh, I don't often use the bent nose pliers. It is, it is personal taste. But I thought I'd give it a go because a lot of chain mailers, it's, it's better for, for turning them like that. You can pick up your open jump ring, pop it through there and just close it. Pick up the next one, pop it through there and close it. Um, I would recommend you either have a spare piece of wire or a larger jump ring, just something that you can pop through there to give you something to hold on to. Oh gosh, that's that's a tight piece of wire. That's a 1.5 mil. There you go. It just gives you something to hang on to. Um, also, you can use, um, which Mandy suggested last time, um, you can use cable ties or, or um, twists. You know, the, the bag twists you get um, sometimes, especially holding presents together. You know, those on, on, uh, ties. So we've got our start now. So we're going to put our, and I'm going to use a silver one to put through there. So we're going to go through those two, come round, and then we want to go lift that one up and around there and close. Again, I'm using my finger to close. You should be using a jump. Well, it's again, it's personal choice. So you can see how we're getting that style. And I, I really like mixing the metals with this because it really is so um, statementy. So now this is where I said to you, if you want to put the small ones on there, it starts becoming a bit, a bit more fiddly. So I'm going to open these and put the big ones on. And I would suggest if you've got smaller um, jump rings, I would suggest you um, do the first method which is to create your two by two chain. That'll be the quickest way. Create your chain first because it's easier to open and close the big ones than the little ones. There's that. There's that one. Right. So what I'm going to do is carry on making a chain. So I'm going to pick up these. One, two and two. So we're going two by two. So I've picked up another two of there. And we're just going to carry on for a little bit, just to get a little bit, because you just to give you the idea. So we've gone through those two. And we're going to pick up the other two there. You get into a rhythm of doing it. So we've now got our two sticking out. So pick up the next two. Go through those two, pick up the next two. Make sure you're going the right direction. If you go the wrong direction when you're picking them up, let me show you that. So I'm going to pick up the next two with this one. So we're creating our chain here. Oh, we've got a message coming in. 
Oh, you might have, oh, hang on. Hi all, absolutely love Helm's Weave. Uh, it looks so pretty and complicated in different colors, but it's so easy to do, highly recommend it. And that's from Mandy, that's my mate. She's absolutely wonderful. She sent some chain mail. Um, she does a lot of the Comic Cons and the um, sci-fi conventions. And uh, she's a big Star Wars fan, uh, not Star Wars, Stargate fan. Um, and Bones. We like a lot of the same TV shows. And she'd send some chain mail off. Oh, I can't remember. I think it's the chap from Bones. Let me. Was it? Was it? Was it the one from Bones? Um, and she sent him a load of chain mail. And he's been putting it on his blog. They've had quite a backwards and forwards going. It's fabulous, brilliant. Yeah. So thank you very much for your message. So I was going to say about twisting. So when you've got two in your two but you've got this spare two if you put it the wrong way so if you go in that way you can get un you can get it twisted the wrong way so the the the, ch the the jump rings are going in two different directions let me pull that and i don't think i managed to do it there so just be careful that you make sure they're going both the same way so can you see how they're they're sitting right if you've got one the wrong way it, it's very obviously the wrong way so now we're going to go through one, two, three. We'll pop three of the silver ones in. And then I think you'll have the idea of how to do this helm's weave. So um, this is one of my favorite, favorite weaves because it is stunning. Another message coming in. And this is from a collector in Cornwall. Just cut a load of rings with my, uh, my Durston, fantastic and put them in a tumbler ready for this oh wave brilliant oh please send in please send it into the wall of fame um when you've done it let's have a look well done you for doing your own jump rings um and this is is it brenda from powis sorry it's a bit far away from me powis <laughs> hope i can get this as i'm finding doing chain mail very hard this is a great one to start off with do your two by two chain. So you've only got two different sizes of jump wings. If you've got different colors, it, A, it can look fantastic like um, Mandy said, but also it helps you really see. So you've got two colors there and then we're gonna put, well, I haven't got a third color. I'm gonna put the silver big ones, two sizes, the gold and the silver one size, and then you've got the little silvers. Slide it through your first one, come around the corner, slide it between those two. If I if I put that there, can you see can you see that? Can I can I show it to two, uh, Chloe? Oh, is it so? Is it better on? Is it which one? Okay, we're just going to try and get really close in for you, so you can see where that's going. But oh, you can see you can see it coming between there, can't you? Between those two gold ones. And then you're going to fasten it shut. So all the time you're sort of putting this between because you've got the, the two gold ones. You're then having this single silver one through the middle. So I'll do that again for you. We're going to go between the two gold ones, around the little silver ones, and then between the next two gold ones. And gone. There we go and then close your jump ring. Now, when you're closing your jump ring, just make sure it's closed properly. Um, some of these jump rings have been open and closed a lot because I demo with them. So, um, but make sure when you're doing it, you take your time and you close them properly. Then we're going to take that one and do the next one through. And you can do this for bracelets, earrings, um, necklaces, obviously, which is what we're doing here. Let's put that one. So it's got to go around the two little ones and through there. Now I've got two spare little ones on the end there. So I'm just going to hold those out of the way. Make sure you're coming between those two and close. So you've got, you've got this chain that you've built up, which is your helm's weave, which is great. Now to attach the pendant to this. Oh, sorry, I missed that message. Sorry. Is that Jeanette in Yorkshire? Hi, Jeanette. Um, I started chainmail making uh, for armour, 
when in the Knights Templar before I made jewellery out of the out of it in silver and gold wire. Fabulous, Jeanette. That of course is where chainmail comes from. Chainmail was uh, an armour used uh, in the medieval times, but but using chainmail goes way way back. And you've got European, you've got um, uh, Chinese, Oriental chainmail, Persian chainmail, Byzantine chainmail, European, uh, Celtic. Everyone basically what it was a protection. So so the most basic used to be a leather jerkin top whatever and then they'd sew rings onto it literally just sewn onto it um, and then they started linking the rings and then each different area would develop their own style of what it looked like and that's where the different varieties of chainmail came from and then it got picked up and it's so huge when i started making jewelry i actually started with chainmail um before I'd done anything else. Well, no, when I was a child, I used to do plastic beads and all that. But when I was an adult and doing jewelry, um, chain mail, I was gonna be massive, massive chain mail maker. But then I discovered wire. And I'm afraid chain mail, chain mail was a bit, I found chain mail then a bit restrictive. I then went back to it after a while and I found the same with seed beads. When I started seed beading, I found it restrictive and, to, and then I went back with it and, and I'll do I don't think I had the confidence in the early days to do my own thing with it now I'll I'll take a weave and then tweak it and make it up and and add things to it and go oh, well I'll, that's a an azataza weave <laughs> I don't know what it's called but it's based it, you know it might have been based on a Celtic weave that I've then tweaked and added to and and turned it into something else and I'm rubbish at naming things so um as a Taza weave number three. <laughs> anyway, so when you've finished your chain, to attach the clasp, I tend to do it when I've got the two here. So I would attach my clasp with a either a single jump ring to the clasp or the clasp directly. Um, I've made my own clasp there, so it's, cla it, it's um, just attached, sorry. Um, it's just attached directly to it. Um, if we've got time, I'll show you how to do that late, earlier, uh, earlier? I'll show it earlier. Just call me Doctor Who. Um, but no, you can, you can attach um, any clasp to it or a jump ring to it or seed bead onto it, um, stitch it onto leather. It looks fantastic. If you've got a leather bracelet and you sew that on, so if you've got a leather band, you can sew that on, um, start and, and end, and it looks amazing. And I would keep it in more of a, a, a copper, colour um, and if you if you sell your jewellery that's gents jewellery every day every oh, it's Alison jewellery as well but you get a lot of gents jewellery so we're then going to go to the single so we're, we've got one of the um, silver ones the single ones so when you're starting the ones who, who were saying they're just starting um, I would do this if you can in different colours because it makes it very easy to distinguish so the easiest way to do chain mail to begin with is to do colours and a lot of um, written tutorials and people demonstrating will demonstrate with different colours and then you can see the progression through it. Um, right now the problem with some of our jump rings or most of our jump rings is find, finding they're so good that you can't find where, where they've opened. I've lost the, I've, I've lost the join. Where is it? There, there it is. So I'm just going to open that, pop on my pendant. Now I am going to use a pliers to close that because I've run out of space. And there we go. And I'm just going to use that and close it up. And there we'll have our chain. You could you could use it as a as a bracelet and have that as a as a dangle down on your bracelet if you wanted. Um, you know, but on the on the main piece, it's on the um, it's on the chain, and I think it looks lovely. And it causes because of the weight of the jadeite, which is incredible. Um, it gives you that real V forming. Um, I haven't put it back on the bust very well, have I? Have I twisted it? Hang on, hang on. No, it's all right. I'm just untwisting it. When I put it back, I think I twisted it. There you go. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? So 
that's your helm's weave it looks fabulous you can double it well i won't complicate it but you can have a play start start with that it's a great beginner's weave so really have a good go um, and check out what jump rings we've got so now you've done that one we're going to do this now this is a bit of um so this is based on a european so it would be an eight in one now what's the, what the european jump rings and while i'm talking about it let me i'm going to take out i'm going to undo my uh my helm's weave so i can do this um because i didn't fetch my big ones that i normally use i had to make some earlier <laughs> so we had so these are actually um 1.5 wire so if you want to practice um, and you've got some 1.5 or 1.25 wire get yourself a mandrel um, <laughs> these were actually made um, wrapping it around a hammer which was on the wall behind us so you know um, use whatever to make your bigger ones um, and it just gives you a great way to practice um, without without having the fiddliness of smaller jump rings I'm going to call it fiddliness right there we go so this this is actually quite a nice um again a nice easy project to do but it incorporates the, the the gemstones more and what it is we've got a line of chain mail that runs through the middle here so all the way through the middle we've got this line of line of chain mail and then we've got two lines of um beads which are attached via um if i turn that round you can see they're on beading thread and then it all gets crimped together so almost the chain mail is is sort of a decoration between two strands of, of gemstones but you can build it as you go along but it's easier to do this middle strip first so it's very easy so like i said it's um it's an eight in one so what does that mean so it means we've got again we've got two different sizes the size of jump rings you're going to need for this is going to depend on the size of your beads so this is this is just a slight awkwardness between a seven in a diameter and a um, five in a diameter so it's somewhere it's it's somewhere between the two um, for the eight mil gemstones and then whether you want to use ovals or rounds i've used them both in this you can use either it it, it does it doesn't matter um this is this is why it was it was difficult for me to put the exact sizes because everybody likes it slightly different um i will i will post when i go home i'll pop on my website the exact ones i've used for for each of these projects um but i i like to empower you to do your own thing a bit and a bit of trial and error absolutely so we want eight um one two three four five six seven eight sorry tom what was that okay so we've got eight in one now so japanese chain mail is made up of two different sizes and they come in all sorts of different varieties and basically that's an eight in one because there's eight jump rings in one bigger one so every time you have the bigger jump ring you have eight you can have four in one so each of those will be single you can have six in one you can have 12 in one and that's where it becomes important for the number of jump rings you can fit in the bigger one so this is where what's called the aspect ratio becomes important but you don't have to worry about the aspect ratio um specifically you can have a go um I don't think I don't think when I've been doing it I've ever actually worked out what's the aspect ratio before I've started I've got some jump rings and gone that won't fit in there therefore I either need narrower jump rings or I need a bigger jump ring so some weaves won't work outside a certain range um uh, JPL is one uh Jens Pin Lin oh list list links links I always forget what that is. Uh, JPL. Um, that has to have a specific ratio to work. Um, Byzantine needs a certain ratio to hold its shape. If you want to have a look at Byzantine, go back to the third. I think I did it on the third, the Byzantine. Um, so have a look at have a look at that. Um, 
but you can do looser byzantine it just doesn't hold as well in shape but it will drop if you put a weight on it anyway so we've got our basic we now need to add on to this so we want to create a chain the two on the side we're kind of going to ignore for now so we're going to pick up another one and i'm going to run out of jump rings and because we've already got two we need to add on another six isn't that lucky i've got six here So we're going to add on those six. So now when we spread them out, we've got two and two, and then two either side. So we've got two at the bottom, two at the top, and two at the side. So you keep going on like that to make the chain, and we'll go to the smaller ones in a minute. And then in the middle of that, we've got... Uh, bigger gem gemstones in here i think and again i normally use big big wooden gemstones with these and they work very well so what we then do is we thread on our jump rings so we put a jump ring there through the beading thread through there through the through the those and to the next one so you go all the way down the line one side and then you'd go all the way down the line the other side so that's the that's the theory on how you make this chain now we're going to make it in the proper sizes okay so i'm going to pop that to one side as you can see again with the bigger jump rings it's it's clearer to show it with you but it, it obviously doesn't hold its shape because they're, they're massive um another way to practice if you want to practice with them is actually to use um shower curtain rings the sort that have a sort of plastic thing they're about that big but it, it, if it helps get get the idea then that's great and you can practice with them so we'll come down to these so we want to have in each one of these so we're going to open him and then we're going to pick up one two three four five six seven eight and then close it so we want two of these closed ones we're going they're going to start our first lot and this is where you can use so all of these can be closed jump rings apart from the ones in the middle so if you've got if you've got a load of um closed jump rings i know we've done some absolutely amazing deals on closed jump rings which are fabulous so we want to have two from the previous one and then one, two, three, so that's five. Let's fetch some of these down. Six, seven, eight. Okay, and then close it. Now you have to be a little bit more careful with this one. We only want two to go onto the next onto the next um stage, but we need two at the top, two at the bottom. We just want these two in the middle. So just it's not very complicated, but it, you just have to be aware you only want those middle two. You still want the two top and bottom okay so we pick those two up and then again we want one you're connected together one two three four five six so that's our eight and then we can shut our jump ring so again we'll go a little bit further along we've got quite a bit of time so we want the middle two and then we're going to come around here I'm, I'm terrible. We need some sort of magnet that, that can stop me knocking the board, Chloe. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you want to do more and your middle jump ring will take more, then you can have maybe three either sides, three through the middle. You can play with patterns. It depends on how big your jump rings are and whether they're going to fit with your uh, rounds. We had some, could you imagine doing this with sterling silver? Um, and the amazing um, uh, nephrite we had on earlier, the green. What do you reckon, Tom? If we if we used those, um, did we have eight mil nephrite on? Not nephrite. Is it? It is nephrite, isn't it? The dark sage green. Oh, you can do. If you did that with some sterling silver jump rings that would make a one high-end piece of chain mail. 
So I'll add another one on the end, but this time I'm not going to, I'm going to pick up those two in the middle, two there, pick up the next two, and then leave, leave those two. So I only want two either side, so I want two that side. Oh, well done, Chloe. Yes, thank you. North, south, east and west. So, so if, we're, if we're taking this, um, that's because I'm rubbish at directions. We're, we're always going, if we're going west to east, we're ignoring north and south jump rings. So you're always ignoring top and bottom when we're just going straight in the middle or you're going north to south and we're ignoring the other side. Okay, so we've now got our chain. Obviously, you'd want to do it because you could use this as a, a choker. You could, oh gosh, that would look nice, wouldn't it? Oh, now hang on. I'd not thought of that. That's a, that's an inspiration. How about having a choker of this, especially if you could do it in the jade, and then having that down below the choker? That would look amazing. That would look fabulous, especially if these were the green nephrite. Wow. All the, all the white we had. Um, amazing. Fabulous. So now we need to get, do a bit of threading. So we've got that's threading, not shredding. We've got some beading thread. So we're going to just wind this on here. Uh, let me attach it. There we go. I tend to I, I tend to avoid cutting anything until I absolutely have to because it, it reduces the waste. You know, if you if you cut that off, you've got to make sure you've got enough so you you have too much. Um, which means you're going to have you're going to waste, I don't know, maybe six inches. Doesn't sound a lot, but I don't I don't like doing it. So let me pop these through here. Take these off. So each of these is going to sit alongside. I'm going to put a jump ring on the end there to hold on to. In fact, I'm going to put one of these big ones on this end. So that's where your clasp would attach to, okay? Um, well, no, it wouldn't. You wouldn't have those on the end. Scratch that, scratch that, because we used uh, because we're using the beading thread. So I'm going to pick up another two of those jump rings. Where did that one go? I dropped it. Stop hiding. Come on, out you come. There we go. So then I'm going to pick those two up in the middle. So it's like the same for both sides. And then I'm going to put that one on and then I need to close that one. So I'll put it on. It's very important with these that you make sure they're properly shut because otherwise the beading thread is going to just pull through them. Let me go into there. And that'll just give us something to hold on to. Okay, so we're going to go now and add on a bead. Then we're going to pick up, and let's call it the north. We're going to pick up the two north ones there. Then we're going to add on another bead. I oh, know, threading beads, scintillating. These are... Um, can't remember what these are called peanut something I think but they they have little black flecks which is very annoying when you're trying to find the hole right so you know I was saying you have to be careful of your four and your your north and south otherwise you end up with one there and three there so just to show you what not to do one's up there three's down here so I'll have to take one of these off here and then I put it back on the top so it's not it's you know it's not it's not it's nothing worse than I've got to undo it and then and then reconnect it there we go but it's just time consuming so we've got our first one on pick up our next one go through our next two north ones one Come on. 
if you've got um, a tying station, um, a handy andy, anything like that, or well, one or two handy andies, then you can you can clip these into place either side and then it becomes so much easier to add it on do all the top ones or all the bottom ones because they're hanging down then turn it over and do the other side so you might find oh we do need handy andy back handy the handy andy so so i think it's officially called a helping hands um thing but it came the handy andy i think after the guy who was on big brother one of the first big brothers became handy andy um the scouser yeah the, the chap from liverpool who who won and donated his prize to a little girl in his neighborhood who was poorly and needed and needed um treatment so that's a by the by that's 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 the one and only time i watched big brother actually <laughs> sorry so, so <laughs> yeah completely random little story but i think that's why handy andy became handy andy Okay, so you can see now how this is holding into shape. It's starting to come together now. It looked a mess, but it's starting to come together. So we go down through there. I do find chainmail very therapeutic. Once you've got a weave, once you've got it down, I think the heart, um, it, 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 it's a repetition. Most chain mail is about repetition. So once you've got that pattern, that weave, it, it's great. I think the hardest weave for me to get my head round was a Persian weave, which is, which is a beginner's weave. I just could not, I could not for the life of me do it. Um, I don't know why. So you can see now if I lift that up, whoops, it's okay, that's okay. Um, then you can see how that's going. Now, if you made a necklace, that would drape beautifully. So, and you could add whatever you wanted from the ones dangling down. So we need to put the um, gemstones through. So what, what I would do, this would then be, um, use a crimp bead to attach it either directly to your clasp. I know, I always say don't do that. And if you can avoid it, do avoid it. So you'd crimp it to another jump ring. Um, and then that would become part of your that would be attaching to your clasp i am however just going to spin it round for ease of this demonstration so you would attach that to the clasp or leave it um leave it free have we got any of those you know the little bead spring springies we used to to have the end end um end stops not the end tips they're, they're like um in fact i think they're called end stop i think they are called bead end stops i might have one they are invaluable if you're waiting to do the, oh that's the needle don't stick your finger in there i usually have one in my little bag ah there it is got one so they're these little things they're great the little spring and what you'd do so assuming we'd cut that we'd put that in there it means you 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 your beads aren't gonna fall off the end we'd start our next piece and then we'd put that in there as well and then you'd go and crimp them afterwards and it just means nothing's gonna fall off which is brilliant it's so secure they're fabulous if we haven't can we fetch those back with handy andy please oh definitely need them for old school next week then we're going to go through that one it's it's amazing how you you use tools um time and time again and then and then you sort of forget about them for a while and then you do something and you're like oh if only i had oh i have got and then you remember what you've got it's always worth having a bit of a tidy out or a clear out um just to check or a re reorganization and then you'll find stuff that well, I do it with gemstones as well. I didn't know I had that, you know. And then it's like, oh, that might be used for. Now you can see this is this is more open. These are slightly smaller than the other beads, um, but you can see how this pattern um, builds up. And we go through that one there. Come on. 
and then we've got that one on the end and that one's in the wrong place so I'm just going to make make sure that's off okay and then we're going to feed that through to there so there's our basic bracelet and whether you finish it oh I need one on the other side whether you finish it with the beads I would finish it with the beads that side So you could make this with smaller bit, smaller jump rings, although this will work. So now you would crimp these onto, I would do them onto another jump ring. There, so I've got some uh, crimp beads somewhere in here in my little box. My little box of tricks, my little traveling. It's amazing how much I cram into that little box. Yeah, it's, it's one of our, we had um, a box of findings and I just keep adding more and more into it and it's crammed full, but it's great for, for carrying around. So we're just going to have a couple of crimp beads. Um, and I was saying earlier, someone stopped me in the doctor's once and asked me, yeah, uh, how did I, how did I use the, how did I get crimp beads to work? Because they couldn't, couldn't get them to work. Well, I was, I was in the waiting room rather than the actual, actual, it wasn't the doctor, but yeah, it's, she was, she was in the pharmacy. She was lovely. She's, and it's still my doctor, so I haven't seen her, but so I'm going to slide those on. So again, if you want to use wire end tips, you can, um, I just slide them on there. You've got the part with the tongue in it so if I close that can you see how that that there's got a little a little tongue sticking up and that's just an oval so you go in that one first and then we go in that one second so the first one will cause it to become a little C whoops oh dear so there you go you can see that's become a little a little C and then we're going to pop that through there and squidge it shut. So it becomes a tube, but you've trapped, and make sure your jump ring's shut before you pull it. You've trapped that um, beading thread. Come on, back in. This is the reason why you don't, one of the reasons why you don't do it very tight. There we go. So that's now secure. We'll undo that. clip there then do the same the other side first you have to take it off the reel I have to say our new um, beading thread is absolutely fantastic I love it best beading thread we've ever had so feed it through the jump ring I think I prefer it even to the flex right <sighs> I know it oh it's fabulous Chloe it really is fabulous Pop that on the jump ring. If you want to do two separate jump rings and then connect it to one, you can. Crimp it down. That can then attach to the clasp. And then we're going to slide that through there. Oh, under you. Um, take your other end off. Be, be very careful that you snip the right end. That's a very common mistake and we've all done it. And then you slide it down, do the same the other side. And then you're going to have your chain mail on your bracelet. Play around with the sizes. Um, play around with your sizes and the bead sizes and get one that really works for you. I, for me personally, I would like that to be a little bit smaller on the inside or the other easiest thing is to make these beads a bit bigger and then it will stretch it out a little bit more. Um, if you stretch it out that way, it will automatically, the beads will automatically stretch it that way. So. Those are a little bit small, um, but it will work um, with whatever you would. Just, just play around with whichever you want. So, um, hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you're all going to have a go at chain mail. And if you do already do chain mail, let's have a, let's fetch, send send them through to the Wall of Fame. Don't forget, if you enter the Wall of Fame um, and you win, you get a hundred percent credited to your account. And if you, if you get runner up, you get 50 pounds and you can enter every week. So you can do one entry a week for as often as you like. 
So even if you've won, you can still re-enter. Um, so send in your entries, please do. Studio at jewelrymaker.com. If you want anything, have a look um, on the website on www.jewelrymaker.com. Um, and also we have um, a share your jewelry maker share your makes page um, send in there it's a lovely community you can ask questions post pictures um, we try and post things um, before we do a show and also um, if you want to catch up with me it's jm guest designer alison tarry so have a lovely christmas check out what's still on the website to buy and send in all your makes bye